Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jesus, we look at you. God, we thank you. We bless you. We come into alignment with your leadership, Holy Spirit. And we make room for whatever you have for tonight. However you want to speak, however you want to move. Lord, we love you.
Jesus, we just say that we love you in this place. We lift you high in this place, Jesus. This is a company of people that love you. We love you, Jesus. We love you in this place and we just look at you right now. We just lift our eyes to heaven and we look at you right now. 
love you, Jesus. And think.
He loves it when we sing.
in your body and would like prayer for healing, raise your hand. Only if you're sick in your body. Everybody else, keep your hands down. I would like everyone in the room to gather around anyone that's got their hand up. And we're going to continue declaring the glory of the name of Jesus over physical illness and sickness. Ask them, say, what do you want the Lord to do for you? It's real simple. And then we're going to ask the Lord all over the room and those that are uh, uh, watching us through God TV and the live web stream, we're going to ask the Lord to show himself as Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals his people because all authority is his. He has total authority over the gates of hell and he releases his glory. Let's go right back to that chorus. In the name of Jesus right now. Lord, release healing. We speak against cancer right now. We speak against tumors right now in the name of Jesus. Kidney diseases right now in Jesus' name. Manifest glory. Healing. Fire of the Holy Spirit. 
flowing, but we're going to just wait on the Lord for a while. Just keep the music flowing. Holy Spirit, we recognize your presence right now in the room. We recognize your glory and your presence. And we say, magnify the name of Jesus. We rebuke sickness right now. We take authority over demonic strongholds. We take authority over the torment of Satan right now in physical bodies. In Jesus' name right now. We're not going to get in a hurry. We're going to linger here for a few moments. Holy Spirit, thank you for your manifest glory. Now release the fire of your healing power right now.
Every crooked spine Every crooked spine In the name of Jesus Every skeletal disorder Hip pain All pain Must go in Jesus' With name With flesh injuries being healed Begin to move your neck and shoulders All over the room, Lord Release the fire of your glory We believe you Holy Spirit Magnify the name of Jesus now There is power in the blood There is power in the blood We break agreement with sickness You're not our friend There's power in the blood There's power in the blood of Jesus The cross was that finished work All your sicknesses all your diseases were born in his body on the tree. We've been healed by your stripes. By your stripes. We are healed. We are healed. Rafa, we cry out. We come under your cross. Line up, line up with the cross. By your stripes, Jesus. Oh, by your stripes. We are healed. We are healed. By your blood, by your stripes, we are here. There is By your stripes, we are here. There is power in the blood. By your stripes, we are here. Sickness cannot stand against the blood. By your stripes, we are here. for a few more moments I want to pray for people that are feeling tormented in the night you have nightmares in the night or a spirit of torment and fear grips you 
It seems irrational at the strangest times. A spirit of fear and panic grips you. I'm going to pray for those also. Where suicide comes and attacks your mind and it seems so real that you must do this. This is a demonic attack against your mind and torment. The spirit of suicide, the sense of panic that comes over that's irrational. I want to pray against it now. I take authority right now all over this room, over demonic torment. I break the power of the spirit of suicide. I break the power of tormenting dreams and fear, tear in the night. I take authority over panic and fear that's irrational. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of liberty. And I speak liberty to the mind right now. Freedom from demonic dreams. Freedom from the spirit of suicide in Jesus' name. Freedom. Speak to those who have struggled with self-harm, with eating disorders. The Lord's releasing freedom from addictions. Freedom from self-harm. In the name of Jesus, we bind the power of every demon that seeks to harm your people. We speak freedom from bulimia and anorexia in Jesus' name. Demon, in the name of Jesus, torment, suicide. We take authority over you. We command you to let go of their mind right now in the name of Jesus. Depression, go. Depression, go in Jesus' name. The spirit of heaviness. The spirit of heaviness. Release the spirit of praise. We break the spirit of heaviness in Jesus' name. Knowledge, go for it. Just jump in. Uh, As we were praying, I felt from the Holy Spirit that there are several people here that had injuries when they were children and it stole their childhood. And that as an adult, you've been crying out to be restored by the Holy Spirit, not only physically, but also emotionally. That you want to be restored for what was stolen from you, that you know you couldn't have a childhood because you were stuck in your room sitting on the couch because you couldn't move. And there were several, several kinds of injuries, some in your legs, some in your back where you couldn't move, you didn't have full mobility and your childhood was stolen from you. And I believe that there are several people in this room that the Lord is going to heal, not only phys- physically, but the Lord is gonna bring a transformation to your emotions, to your mind, to the lies that the enemy put into your heart, into your mind when you were a child, when you couldn't move and you thought that you were lesser than. So I just want to take a moment and pray for those people. If you feel like that's you, just raise your hand. If anybody's raising their hand around you, go ahead and lay your hands on them. I felt, I felt in, that, in that close, specifically there's someone who had metal pins all down their legs and in their ankles. And there was literally a complete lack of mobility in one of your legs. So, so if that's Chloe, you as go well. Ahead and pray, Chloe. So Holy Spirit, we believe that you are real. Holy Spirit, we believe that you have the power to heal. So here we are tonight. And we're asking even now for those that their childhood was stolen because of injuries. We we sing, we say healing in the name of Jesus. We ask for the fire of the Holy Spirit to rest over your body in the name of Jesus. We break our agreement with the evil one and we bring, and we say healing over your body. Those who have injuries in your back, injuries in your legs, even those who are watching online, we release your spirit, Jesus. We say, Holy Spirit, rest upon these bodies. We speak healing. We ask for your power even now. And I'm asking for emotional and mental healing, God. That what was stolen from the by the enemy, we say, be restored in the name of Jesus. Be restored in the name of Jesus. The enemy has no more foothold in your life. The enemy does not have a foothold in your thoughts. We speak life. We speak life. We speak life. We speak life in the name of Jesus. We speak healing in the name of Jesus. Let your fire come in the name of Jesus. We ask in the name of Jesus for healing. Do not forget your children. Do not forget those who have been asking those who have been knocking, those who have been seeking, 
We speak life in the name of Jesus. We speak life in the name of Jesus. Even now, Holy Spirit, come into this room. Rest on the broken bodies. Rest on the broken backs. We, we ask for full mobility in the name of Jesus. You're the God of restoration. You're the God that restores. So this is what we're asking for tonight. Bring restoration. Speak life in the night. We speak life. Stay engaged. This is a sanctuary of the Holy Spirit where believers are in unity together with the Holy Spirit and the Word. Let's not be spectators. Let's engage together. We speak life. Just go one or two minutes max, each one, yeah. We speak life. sister was saying there's there's two specific childhood wounds um someone in here busted their head when they were a kid and their kid their their parents were scared of seizures and they were a little bit scared to kind of let them go and run and be a kid and so there was there's almost like this fear attached that you can't get free of because you're you're constantly in that box of what if what if what if but god is greater than that box and the other one is there's um there's a there's an issue with the muscle in your calf in your left calf and I don't it's kind of like the muscle is like wrapped around the bone in a really awkward weird way and it, it seizes up and it hurts to walk after a while there's someone with a pinched nerve in their right back like their lower back and there's someone in this room with a pain in between their pinky and their ring finger on their left hand and it's like it will randomly just kind of start seizing almost when you're trying to write or eat or just even just uh, relate to people and it actually scares you because you feel like you're a weirdo and you can't relate to people like it's this it's a big thing for your heart but I want you to know that God is greater and he's stronger and he made you the way you are because he loves you and he's so much more powerful than your pain and your frustration and the last that's, that's last okay. one real quick okay, there's a girl named Amy in here and you've been wanting your dad to give you a hug and your daddy loves you your heavenly father loves you, Amy, and I don't know where you are, but God sees you, and he knows you, and your life is worth something. Don't, don't agree with the lies. You have value. You have a destiny, and you're important. So God, I lift up these people today, knowing that you're greater, knowing that you are God. You are the one true living God, and there is no one greater than you. And I stand with my brothers and sisters, and I say the blood. Jesus into a portion. The 
come forward for prayer anymore. You're, you've grown weary in the journey of contending and the God of all hope is gonna visit and he's gonna heal. It's, I don't know what the affliction is. It's like the man that waited 38 years, but in a moment he was healed. It's like the woman with the issue of blood, 12 years, suddenly it's over. We're gonna have that moment right now. If that's you, I want you to lift your hand. God of hope, we ask you to descend in this room right now across everyone that's been contending and we ask for the full measure of healing to be poured out tonight because we believe in the suddenly of God. We believe there's healing in the name of Jesus. So incurable diseases go in the name of Jesus. Sickness goes in the name of Jesus. Benji, go ahead. Uh, I have faith for a healing of the issue of the heart related to depression and it has to do with what uh, Alan was sharing long uh, a few hours ago that the enemy confuses you by confusing a season of pruning when the Lord is taking fruit out of you and the enemy is saying that you are disqualified forever and I, I have a burden for pastors and for, for people here in ministry who are depressed. And you, this is your last option. And uh, you came here completely like desperate. And I just want to pray for a releasing of joy in the name of Jesus. Lord, in Jesus' name, I take authority in your name. And I ask that you will destroy depression in ministers right now. Pastors, the best is yet to come in the name of Jesus. God is going to give you a fruitful ministry and life. And it's going to look like sons and daughters surrounding you with authority, with your DNA. So Father, I ask in Jesus' name, destroy the power of the accuser of the brethren. In Jesus' name, no more depression. In Jesus' name, release joy, Father, in Jesus' name. I'm just so strongly feeling there are hundreds of women here tonight who struggle with eating disorders and the enemy has been telling you the lie that you are not good enough that you don't look good enough and that unless you lose weight or you look a certain way you will not walk into your destiny and I want to say that's a lie from the pit of hell I am so tired of the enemy ruining women's lives because of this lie and if you look into the mirror and you feel that serpent of self-hatred twists itself around you, I want you to put your hands in the air right now. Come on, be vulnerable right here. Lord, break the shame of this generation. If you are being tormented by this, the Lord wants to set you free. The Lord wants to heal you tonight. Jesus, Jesus, Lord, I ask that you would crush this lying spirit that tells women they're not good enough, they don't look good enough. I pray that you will crush it under your feet in the name of Jesus. God, I ask that you would break the power of self-hatred over this generation of women. Lord, I ask that when they look in the mirror, God, they would see your beauty. God, I ask that you would set them free, God. That they be able to look in the mirror and see the beauty that you made them to be. The beauty that's within them. And I declare and I prophesy that beauty from ashes will rise. Oh! In the name of Jesus. If you are struggling with this, I ask that you would just get someone to lay your hands on them right now. Women, I know you're there. I feel it. I feel the burden of the Lord right now. Jesus, I ask, God, that you would break the power of self-hatred. That you would break 
the power of anorexia, that you would break the power of bulimia over yes. a generation. Yes. This is not your portion. This is not your portion, ladies. Guys, even guys struggle with this. It's not your portion. The Lord is wanting to raise up a generation that is free from this. They don't look to find their identity in the mirror. They look to find it in the one who loves them, calls them Hephzibah. Thank you, Elrinda. Go ahead. I was feeling earlier after Lou and Alan shared, you know, they were vulnerable with us as fathers. But I looked across the room and I felt there are hundreds, if not thousands of women in this room who struggle with besetting sin, with issues of pornography and lust related to this issue right here. I feel they're connected. So Father, I ask tonight that you would wash over your daughters in this place. God, those who have not seen examples and they've looked to fill a void in their lives. Lord, I ask that you would set them free with your gaze. Lord, I ask that they would see your eyes upon them, that you would fill that void now, in a moment. The desire would be gone in a moment. Jesus. I I actually, I wanna pause for just a second. If I could bring it down for just a moment. I want us all just stop. She, she mentioned this. I want us to just close our eyes before the Lord. It's important that on these things that even as Lou and I, that we, we first realize we have to, there's one, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse our guilty conscience. So I want you right now to take time and just right before the Lord, that if you've engaged in looking at any type of pornography and shame and guilt has weighed upon you and some of you ladies have and men you've looked at pornography and it's created this massive insecurity in you and self-hatred comparing yourself and wondering if you'll ever be uh uh you'll ever be good enough or be able to satisfy your spouse i'm just being really blunt but that horrible perversion comes in and just reach self-hatred in your mind insecurity wondering if you'll ever be able to satisfy your mate and the Lord has a good future for you you can trust him with your future wife your future husband it's going to work and and the Lord is going to bring you together but right now just before him I want you to confess your sin to the Lord close your eyes and say God I'm sorry I repent Lord, forgive me. This breaks your heart and does me great harm. I'm so sorry. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Cleanse my eyes. Perversion is not my future. I will not give way to this wicked thing. My eyes are to see your glory. My body is for the glory of the Lord. For him and him alone. Jesus, cleanse me. Jesus, wash me. Jesus, set me free. In the name of Jesus, I renounce perversion. Just say that with me. I renounce perversion. I renounce perversion. I renounce perversion. I renounce lust. In the name of Jesus, I want no part of you in Jesus name Satan you are not my master and I am not your servant I break agreement with all forms of lust in Jesus name and I command you to go and Lord I ask you to set my part apart my body for you and you alone You have a good future for me. A good future for me. And I renounce self-hatred. I have nothing to do with it. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. And you have a good future for me. I renounce fear and torment. In the name of Jesus. 
and I receive your grace. And I believe you have a good future for me, God. In Jesus' name. Juliet, you have a word, and then we have another word, and then we have one more, and then you pray for these three. Okay, go ahead. Someone on the operations team told me that they had a word of knowledge earlier about sickle cell anemia. So if that's you, raise your hand and uh, those around you can pray. And I'm also just um, sensing in my spirit that some of you that have a lot of um, digestion issues tied to anxiety, that the Lord wants to deliver you from the root issue of anxiety tonight. Right here, we got one. Yeah, I was feeling the same exact thing, but mainly crippling anxiety from childhood traumatic events that cause you not to even, you can't even go outside your house because you get too scared or just the feelings start happening and like, yeah, just definitely what she was saying. And I was just feeling for barren wombs that I want to speak life over barren wombs. Pray for all three yeah. of these, if you will. So I mean, God, release we all say, three of them. in the name of Jesus, that you would release your healing power. Jesus, your name is above fire. anxiety. Your name is above sickle fire. cell anemia. God, your name is above depression. Release your fire, Lord. Jesus. We speak your name to barren wombs. Your manifest and we glory. Say life in the name of Jesus. Life in the name of Jesus. Over miscarriages. Glory, glory. We speak life in the name of Jesus. We prophesy life that a generation would come forth. Set free from besetting sins. Set free from sickness. God, we ask that the enemy would not take out. Children, we speak life over the womb in the name of Jesus. 
particularly on those with blindness, partial sight in your eyes. And we speak every blind eye in this room open in Jesus' name. Every blind eye open in Jesus' name. We prophesy sight in the spirit and sight in the natural in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's all stay right where we are. Let's, just, let's stop the music for a moment. Just, we always like the music going, but this is a little different right now. I don't want anybody to move. I just want to take two or three minutes. Just wait a second. There are people in this room that you don't have a living relationship with Jesus tonight. A friend brought you, or maybe you grew up in church, and you know about religion, but Christianity is not a religion. It's a living relationship with a real man who's fully God. And this real man paid the price for your total forgiveness for free. But he doesn't want to just forgive you. He wants to draw you into a relationship with him that lasts forever and forever as part of the family of God. And he says, I'm offering this to you as a free gift, the Lord says. But I will not force you to receive it. You have to say yes. You have to call upon me and invite me into your life. For the scripture says, he stands at the door of your heart and he knocks. He says, if you will open it, I will come into you. So right now, there's people all over this room. You grew up in church but you've never ever made this real, heartfelt, deep relationship commitment. You've not received the free gift of eternal life or maybe a friend brought you. So I'm gonna pray right now that the Lord would touch you. And now if that's anyone in this room, I want you to pray with me. I want you to raise your hand up if you're saying, yeah, that's me. I need to enter into this relationship with the Lord Jesus. I want you to raise your hand up if you brought a friend just whisper right now. Say, hey, raise your hand up if you want to. Raise your hand up high. I want to see them all over the room. All over the room. Now I want you to pray with me. Just repeat after me. This is only the beginning of the conversation with them. And the friend that brought you, I would like you to take them deeper uh, after the meeting because you brought them here. They're your friend. But I want them to pray right now. Begin the conversation with the Lord. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I accept your free gift of salvation. I repent of, of ignoring or renouncing your leadership in my life. And I ask you to forgive me for my going my own way. And I want your leadership in my life. I want a relationship with you. I want your free forgiveness. Receive me into your kingdom now. Receive me, Lord Jesus, into this relationship now. I believe you and I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now let's just say thank you, Lord, for new ones, hundreds of them all over the room who came into the kingdom tonight. Thank you, Lord. Okay, now, you can go back to your chairs. <laughs> now remember that friend that came with you, maybe they didn't raise their hand, but, but continue the dialogue after the meeting saying, hey, what do you think about what that guy said? What do you think about you inviting Christ into your life right now tonight? Beloved, it's a free gift, you can have it tonight. You can't earn it, you can't deserve it. No matter how horrible our sins are, he fully and freely forgives them. You're welcome to stay seated here if you want. But we're going to give you two or three minutes to make your way back to your chair before we proceed on with the evening. Imagine names were put into the Lamb's Book of Life a few minutes ago. Names were written into the Lamb's Book of Life. Now this is only the beginning of the conversation with Jesus. It's just starting. 
You're going to talk to him more throughout the evening and tonight and get alone with him and say, Jesus, this is new. And you want to get involved with a body of believers, a, a local church back home. You can't make it on your own. You have to be committed to a group of believers back home and jump into that family with all of your heart. That family's not going to be perfect. It's going to have flaws. But you're a part of that family. The Lord's already ordained it. And jump in and say, hey, I want to be a part of this family. I'm new in the kingdom of God. It's critical that you don't draw alone and be isolated because the enemy will come and steal the word right out of your heart. It's going to wait for just a, two more minutes maybe for everybody to get back to their seats.